Hello, everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, welcome to a uh, special Royal Rumble edition of Friday Night WrestleCast um, here on The Coalition. That's The Coalition with the K. Uh, I'm your host, Ricardo Negron, and uh, was joining me is Dana Abercrombie. How's it going, Dana? Hello. It's going well. And also joined by Richard Bailey Jr. How are you doing, Rich? Doing good, Ricky. What's up, listeners and viewers? And I know that I mentioned that I'm the host, but we're kind of like the shield where there's no true leader. You know, we've all hosted this show. We kind of do it by committee <laughs> or whatever. You know, uh, it's 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 all, all for fun. I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, you're here not to hear me ramble. You're here to get our predictions for the Royal Rumble. And we took a look, and there are six, I believe six matches on the card, and that includes the women's and the men's Royal Rumble matches themselves. Um, what was I going to say? Um, and uh, sorry, one second. My phone rang. Yeah, not good. But, um, yeah, we got six matches on the card. Um Let's get right into it. We're going to go to let's see. We're going to start off with the mixed tag match. Okay. You got Edge and Beth Phoenix teaming up against Miz and Maurice. So mixed tag. I mean, we don't get a whole lot of those in WWE, it seems like nowadays. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, two. Two legendary pairings, you know, two, um, you know, a couples, whatever. Uh, and I'm gonna level with you guys. I haven't really been following Raw, so I can't really give you my insight on like the buildup towards this. So I'm not quite sure what to expect. I don't know if you guys have been watching, and if uh, I mean, I'm I'm willing to let you guys start off, whichever one you want to start off on uh, predicting this one because. Yeah. I'm not sure what to expect. So I'll start off. First and foremost, uh, WWE and AEW uh, has been pretty boring for me lately. Obviously, there's some events that did happen. So I caught the events. But in terms of this matchup, uh, I'll just say this. Uh, I like The Miz. I like Maurice. Um, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious, I think, that Edge is going to win the match because, you know, Edge is the one that is the baby face in this feud. Um, mm -hmm. He's the one that they are on momentum, and he's the one that's probably going to have a big WrestleMania uh, match. So Edge should win, but I will say this. I'll be very disappointed if we don't eventually get an Edge versus AJ Styles match because it feels like when Edge came back for the first time in that Royal Rumble, they teased a lot of people he could face, and not, some of those matches haven't had happened yet because he's been injured. You know, he had his little feud with Randy Orton, he, then he's been injured, and all this other stuff. But I think AJ Styles, that's a match that I think both of those guys want, want. and as a fan, I would definitely want to see that match. So hopefully that is what happens. But as for this event, yeah, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that Edge is going to win it. This Edge and, you know, Maurice will have her moments in the match. Uh, Beth will have her moments. But, yeah, Edge is the clear winner of the match for sure. Okay. What do you think, Dana? Well, we all kind of know that Edge and Beth Phoenix are the ones who's going to win it. But I think it would be more entertaining to have Miz and Maurice. Um, we, we have that huge campaign with uh, Mortal Kombat is doing the the sequel. And it's a huge campaign for the Miz to play Johnny Cage. Mm. So it would be hilarious if he won with Maurice and, you know, get his name out there more, even though it's already out there, but for people to go even more insane and be like, see, he should play Johnny Cage. Um, but obviously Edge and Beth Phoenix are, are going to win. Okay, I can't say that I disagree with any of that. I mean, it, it would seem that, like, you know, between the two teams that Edge and Beth Phoenix are, like, the power couple there, you know, they, um, you know, they they should win that. Um, and, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, that with, with these, like, 
you know, these squabbles, these mixed, um, these mixed tag, you know, feuds, whatever. I like them short, so I hope that whatever whatever happens with this match, that ends that whole thing. And like Rich said, you know, Edge should have bigger fish to fry, mm -hmm. uh, such as AJ Styles. That would be a tremendous uh, program and something that's WrestleMania worthy. So, um, you know, we'll see where all that goes. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off you guys and say yes, uh, Edge and and Beth Phoenix win. Uh, um, so that's a consensus there. So that means that any of you watching right now, you put your money on Miz and Reese. <laughs> probably get it wrong. I don't know, but uh, uh, that's it for that. Let's move on. Um, I mean, let's move on to a match featuring Dana's favorite wrestler. This is going to be for the WWE Championship. <laughs> We have Brock Lesnar, the reigning champion, defending it against Bobby Lashley, the Dana favorite. Uh, Dana, please go first. I want to hear your thoughts. On <laughs> yeah. We're both we're both muted. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. I like what they're doing with Brock Lesnar. I like Cowboy Brock Lesnar. I like talkative, have fun Brock Lesnar. He is something that is, he, this is how you make someone who is the same, but different. You just have him talk and show his weird personality and have him dress up as like a farmer, which is weird because you see this big broly guy. Because remember the last time that we saw him, he was throwing car doors into the audience. Um, so this one here is just really great. Paul Heyman just lets him go and do his thing. So I like this. He's the opposite of Bobby Lashley in terms of personality. And I, I'm like, where are you going with this? I want Bobby to not win. I know people are going to be like, he deserves it. And Black History is just a couple of days away. So he deserves it. Overall, he deserves the title just in general, but not right now. Not for this match. I like what we're doing with Brock Lesnar. And then we can have, what, the Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So keep it as it is. Let Brock, not, let, let, bleh, let Brock Lesnar win. And Bobby can come in and win, I don't know, and bash at the beach and call it a day. <laughs> it's interesting that you mentioned, well, you know, Bobby Lashley winning and, you know, Black History Month or whatever. Wasn't that the case last year that he beat The Miz? Like, wasn't it yep. in February? Yep. So it's like, why would they do the exact same thing again when it's, it's like... It's WWE. I mean, yes. But, <laughs> like, How many matches have we seen that were repeats that we've seen already? Right. It's WWE. It's, it's, I mean, my thing is like, you know, I was like generally happy for Lashley when he won it last year. Um, and you know, he had a pretty dominant run, but it's like I'm not in a rush to go back to that just yet. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm gonna just say that Brock Lesnar retains because I don't think that their plan, I mean, their plans change all the time. I mean, wasn't there a, like a, a leak that Big E was supposed yeah. to retain that belt uh, and on day one, but, but because Roman, of got, Roman mm -hmm. got COVID and then they. Yep put Brock in this match and they gave Brock the belt instead. Um, so plans change all the time, but I don't think that part of the plan is to put the belt on Brock just for him to give it up a few weeks later to Bobby Lashley. I think Lashley's here just to like, as just filler. And the thing is that this is a match that a lot of people have been asking for. It's something that Bobby Lashley himself wanted part mm -hmm. of why he came back to WWE. So I'm glad he's having the match and, Quite frankly, I think that just being in the match with Brock Lesnar is reward in itself for Bobby Lashley. <laughs> oh, yeah. to just be happy to be there. That's what that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like just I, it, it's, <laughs> look, Bobby's already had the belt before, and there's nothing saying that he can't get it again later this year. It's just not going to be right now. But let's get the Brock Lesnar match out of the way because we've been putting this off for years. Yes. You know so that's all. So, so 
I yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to to do a run in here and say that I agree with all the points that were said, except for the one point that uh, that Bobby Lashley deserves to be champion. I disagree with that because yes, he already had his title reign, and it's it's like this match, as you said, Ricky. This is a match that he has wanted for a while. Now I don't know if Brock Lesnar ever wanted this match. Because he's the one that's been on vacation, you know, with his ridiculous schedule, not wrestling, all this other stuff. So I, I don't know if he's ever really wanted this this match. But mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley has been vocal about wanting this match for a long time. So, yes, the reward is he gets the match, and then that's it. And then he loses because, obviously, Brock Lesnar has unfinished business with, unfinished business with Roman Reigns. And, and that is the WrestleMania match that – um. I really don't give. I really don't care to see, but uh, you know somebody is going to care to see it. So, uh, yeah. But um, that yeah yeah. This is this this is the match. So it should be an it should be a great match regardless between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar. But I there's there's no way Bobby Lashley's winning that belt uh, tomorrow night. This is no no way no way in hell. No chance in hell. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, I think that's something that we can all agree with there. Um, yeah. But then at the same time, you can also argue Brock Lesnar has been champion like 85 times just in this 2022. Oh, I, I, I agree 100 percent. But but herein lies the truth that, that everybody knows, but nobody wants to admit they have a higher stock in, in Brock Lesnar. Mm. Vince oh, McMahon, yeah. I think he wants to continue to see this guy because he's also looked upon as a star. WWE getting rid of all the talent that they've had. They don't really take time to build stars. And so this guy is a legitimate scene in Vince as a major star attraction. So I understand why they want to give him the belt. But at the same time, they need to be looking to the future and building up the talent that they have. That is if they don't decide to release him before they even have a chance to do anything on the roster. (laughs) So we'll see. I feel like Brock is one of the very rare ones that calls the shots when it comes to like, whether he comes or goes. He's, mm-hmm. you know, he's got he's got Vince McMahon under his thumb, and not many wrestlers can say that. Um, and, and and like Vince will not quit him. He just will not quit him. And so, and, but I'll, I'll get. But I'll, I'll go back to what Dana said that you know, what the, this version of Brock Lesnar I'd say is a lot more entertaining than any version that I've seen since he's come back to WWE over a decade mm-hmm. ago. You know, it was um, old school. It was, uh, yeah, like the, the sombrero wearing and dancing Brock Lesnar, the kind of guy that, that showed his personality once in a while, you know, like it didn't hide behind Heyman all the time. So it's like, it's, it's, it's good to see that. Um, just as long as it doesn't get cringeworthy after a certain point, but. You know, um, I, I, I'm in, I'm enjoying it, but, and as long as he makes frequent enough appearances and doesn't disappear for like three months at a time, then okay, fine. But, you know, we'll, we'll see where, where they go with him and everything. But like, like you guys said, they really need to stop relying on the old talent from previous eras. Um, Cause they're not always going to be able to go. And then you get, get to a point where there are no attractions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. um, let's go to singles match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. You got the defending champion, Becky Lynch, a.k.a. the man. I don't, I don't <laughs> using that anymore, but um, she is going to defend against Dewdrop. Um I'm going to just flat out say Becky Lynch retains, um, but is Dewdrop a heel or is she a face? Because then she like uh, teased going heel not that long ago. She and did, so but it's WWE, so it's not consistent. So I see. Let, let me just say this. I'm a fan of Piper. Piper Nevin is her real name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a fan of her. Um, Creatively, they have done a horrible job on pretty much everybody on this show. And uh, you are correct. At one point, she was a heel, and I guess she's a face now. I I don't know. And I don't watch now because creatively, 
WWE is a complete mess what they do to every character. Yeah. So what the, the common sense thing is that everybody knows WrestleMania is coming up. You really think they're going to have Becky Lynch lose that title and then not go to WrestleMania? There's no 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 way. So yeah, Becky Lynch is going to win. Uh she'll probably cheat to win cuz she thinks she's still a heel. But um yeah, it, it, I I still think it, it could be a decent match because I am curious to see how uh, Dewdrop goes against Becky Lynch. Physically in the ring, that could be a good match, but it's pretty obvious Becky Lynch is is that's the one that they want to highlight at WrestleMania. So she's going to win this match for sure, especially with the title on the line. Yeah, it's, she's going to win. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, you know, don't let Dewdrop's. Uh appearance fool you she's very talented very mm-hmm. good in the ring and uh you know she's gonna put on a great match with becky lynch who herself you know i'm pretty solid in there and um it's just it, it comes to like you know star power becky lynch has that Dewdrop doesn't quite have that so this is a match where it's gonna be designed for her to look good in defeat like look like okay she didn't quite you know maybe becky lynch cheated like like you know rich suggested um and, and, but but she brought you know but but Dudra brought Becky to the limit and so she's a threat and she's a name that you got to keep in mind for later on um I think that's what this match is for um I don't see Drew drop winning this and going to mania as the champion they want to have Becky Lynch do that um because she's already an established person she's you know the winner of the first ever women's main event. Uh, at a WrestleMania, so it just makes most more, more sense that she goes into this Mania as champion. So, no, uh, what do you think, Dana? Um, because it's WWE, there's multiple ways. This could be a two-second squash match, or this is when Ronda Rousey makes her appearance, and so she beats Dewdrop. Ronda comes in, and then we have an unnecessary three-way. At WrestleMania, with twenty, you know, contenders matches against Dewdrop and Becky Lynch. Uh, I, it, mm-hmm. I, 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 I just want to make a comment. I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to say this: if WWE does actually manage to watch this podcast, <laughs> I and I and I'm sure many others do not want to see that match. If you're going to have Ronda Rousey return, it has to be a one-on-one match. With Becky Lynch, there's no other way because we had Charlotte involved the last time they had a triple threat, and I think at that point people wanted to see Ronda and Becky because they are the one that had the real feud. So, if Becky Lynch is going to face Ronda Rousey, that needs to be one on one, no triple threat. Just let them go at go at it. Uh, you know that that would be better, I think. Or they can pull a Bianca. So Becky wins. Rhonda comes out. Oh, you you have to face me. All right, then I'll face you. And then uh, Rhonda comes in and squash in two seconds. And then Rhonda wins. Well, that'd be interesting if Rhonda did squash in one. Um, that would be interesting. I mean, I, they're low in the ratings. I, I but but you know, we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. But but that, that matchup that that should be the WrestleMania matchup for the women's title. Those two for sure. Because if if the rumors are true, she'll be back. Then there's no other match. L- listen, WWE has not because they have been getting rid of talent. They, I think they in their mind they think, oh, we we're still number one. We still have a great product. But come on now, the reality is you look at that roster and how it was compared to how it is now. A lot of people are gone some of which were really, really good. They had a lot of upside. So mm-hmm. you have to think, how is this going to impact the match quality in the matches that you are able to have? So if Ronda Rousey is coming back, that has to be a match at WrestleMania. It's, it's no, there is no other alternative because it should be a WrestleMania match given their history anyway. But yeah, that, that, that has to be, you know, because you don't really have too much to work with right now. Because they're not they're not pushing people, so yeah, but we'll see. We'll see, or it could be Ricky's um, favorite twins come out there. 
Oh, the Bella Twins? I want to cut you off right there, Dana. You know? I want to cut you off right there. So, one is we're editing that whole that whole part out. <laughs> we're editing the whole part out. Dana, what is your prediction for this match? Don't Iconics! Former. Hey, <laughs> woman, please. Um, or any particular twins, please don't do that. It's, it's, um, not the, it's the twins or it could be the, the Iconics. So either no. way, you're a happy I man. I like the Iconics, and they should not have let them go. But I think that they're doing their own thing. What on impact, I believe. Um, you know, I'm sure they they kill it wherever they are. Uh, they really that really bothers me that they let them go. It's, I'm still not happy about that. But mm -hmm. um, keep in mind with Rhonda, and there's that name that we, you, Rich, you and I were there to see that match in person, and that was a match that ended in a botch. Yeah, I'm not in a rush to see. Another match like that. Uh, all of her matches so, so 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 based off of what you, so so based off of what you just said, uh, I'm gonna I'm going to revisit something. I have a response to that. I'm gonna wait until we get into the actual women's match because I, I have a theory as to what an alternative option would be. But continue. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so yeah, uh, we've all we've all made our predictions for. Becky Lynch and Dewdrop. I think that Becky Lynch is going to retain, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's save some of this juice for the women's Royal Rumble match, which we'll get into very shortly. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get into it right now. Let's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's get into it right now. Let's do it because we've got this We got this momentum going. Mm -hmm. Women's whoa. Uh, women's Royal Rumble match. 30 women go in and only one can can prevail. Um, that's what he said. Sorry. Uh oh. Sorry. Only one can prevail. And uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is <laughs> Throwing me off. Um, I'm immature. There's, there's a whole, let's see, there's a whole list of confirmed. Entrance um, to this, and that includes Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash. Right? I'm not sure, ASH. No, not Ash. <laughs> Nikki ASH. <laughs> Dana Brooke, Carmella, Queen Zelina, Tamina, Shotzi, Natalia, Aaliyah, Naomi, Shayna Baszler, Charlotte Flair, the Bella Twins, Lita. <laughs> Michelle McCool, Kelly Kelly, Summer Rae, if you can recognize her. Oh, uh, no. Mickey James. There's that forbidden door. Um, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Sasha Banks, and announced tonight, well, along with Sasha Banks, is uh, Sonya Deville is going to be in this. Mm. And, Russell, uh, what? So, I, 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 is it possible for me to go first? In terms of this uh, explanation, so that's twenty-three names. There's still seven that we don't know about, and so okay. that, that's good that they're leaving some surprises. Uh, Rich, you want to go first? You go right ahead. Let me start by asking a question: Isn't Charlotte Flair the, the champion right now on SmackDown? She is, and she said herself on tonight's show that she's entering so that when she wins, that she will get to pick her opponent. She's saying that oh, she's really? in control. Okay. And that she's going to dictate it and all that stuff. That was that was her whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, uh, if Ronda Rousey is not in this match and doesn't win this match, I think who should win the match is the one person we haven't seen in quite some time. And it would make sense from a storyline standpoint for this person to win. And I'm talking about Asuka. Because you remember when Becky Lynch got pregnant, she mm -hmm. gave that belt to Oscar. Yes. And, you know, we haven't seen any interaction between those two because Oscar has been injured in a way from a while. So I think it would make sense from a storyline standpoint that if Oscar is in the match, she comes back. Obviously, that's a surprise. That's why they didn't announce her, her as one of the people that's in the match. Mm -hmm. She comes back. She wins the match. 
And then she faces Becky Lynch in the event that Ronda is not ready to come back yet and face Becky Lynch. That is that is what I think would be because there's no one else that I could see them saying, oh, yes, we're going to give this other person a shot because they've already had Rhea Ripley have other matches against Becky Lynch. You, you I mean you've already run through the, the gamut as far as the people who have who would have had those matches already, including Bianca Belair. So it doesn't make sense to have them win the Royal Rumble and then have another match we've already seen. Yes, we've already seen Oscar and Becky Lynch. We have not seen Oscar as a face versus Becky Lynch as a heel. So I would be fine with seeing that if that's what their plan is. But that's that's my pick. That's an sure. interesting theory. That's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I I was expecting a different name. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, we'll see. This is good. This is good. This, I, I, I was worried that you were gonna steal my thunder, and thankfully you didn't. Okay, so, uh, it, so, so Oscar does make sense as far as you know storyline goes. Like I said, because Becky Lynch relinquished the belt because she had to go, you know, uh, be a mom. But uh, mm -hmm. and so now it would be kind of a thing where like now it's like okay, well now she's got the belt and. I'm not giving it to you. You're going to have to take it from me, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that would be fascinating. But the name that I had in mind to win the Royal Rumble uh -oh. is also someone we haven't seen in quite some time. And her name is Bailey. Oh, yes. I completely forgot about Bailey. Wow. Yes. yes. Yeah, I completely forgot about she her. She got injured and missed time. And I think that this is about the time where she would be healthy enough to return. We haven't heard anything about that, and I am glad that they did not they have not spoiled that yet. Because like <laughs> they should not, honestly, they should not have had Sasha come out tonight on SmackDown and be like, Yeah, I'm back and I'm gonna be in the Rumble match. It would have been better to have her show up at the Rumble. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like save the surprise for the Rumble match itself, you know. Um, but haven't heard a peep from Bailey. I have a feeling that she wins this. That's my prediction. That Bailey comes back and wins this, it, and maybe she comes back as a baby face because this would be a big pop, you know, for her to return. Because mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the fans love her; oh. they love her, you know, because she she's even as a heel, she's very entertaining. Um, but I think this might pro this might propel her to come back as a face. I'm um, I'm interested to see where they go with her. Uh, but I'm gonna say Bailey is the one that returns. Like my whole thing was that, like I said, there's seven names that we don't know yet. And I feel like a lot of the people that we've seen already have had their have had their time. They've had mm -hmm. their shots, and and so like to me, like Bailey is someone that just went like it's a people forgot about her, and, and she would just be such a great uh, a surprise. Uh, Dana, I really want to hear your thoughts on uh, uh -oh. what you think for this Rumble match. I'm trying to think of surprises, and y'all, y'all are just surprising me because I was going to say Bailey. You done stole my surprise, which technically really wasn't a surprise because it was like, yeah, congratulations, you stole from a woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I saved the best for last, but I could steal the thunder. <laughs> steal the thunder. Um. I in I don't want to say Rhonda because that is so obvious, but it really just felt like a Rhonda at this point. Um, I we have those surprise entrants that could be really really good, and I hope it's not like wrestlers where we have to go who and go back in our memory in order to figure it out. And you know they're gonna just. I know everyone is really excited for Mickey James because it's like that forbidden door. But I think she's gonna get kicked out the door in like what thirty seconds. Oh, well, I don't see her not, being. It, 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 it better not be thirty seconds. That'd I don't see her being top ten. Do you see her as top ten? <laughs> no, no. I don't see I don't her think she's top ten, but she's gonna last more than thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, She'll be in there for a while. Not gonna disrespect the, the the Impact Women's Champion like. You know what a I mean? skillsmate? They're not WWE. Doesn't matter. Vince like, only probably it, didn't. It, it, it's still, it's like, it's just bad business to like invite a, a company's champion over just to make them look look like horseshit. You just don't do that. So, okay. If she's able to last, if she's able to last through at least a couple of 
entrance coming in, that's like what, like five or six minutes. Mm-hmm. That might be enough, but thirty seconds, no, we're not gonna do All that right, then right. five five minutes then. Golden <laughs> number five. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's I. But you, you, for me, it really feels like it's gonna be predictable in the sense that remember, everyone has been fired. Yep. So unless they start bringing back fired wrestlers, um, I don't think they're going to win either. So but, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's 30 women, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Continue. That's, uh, that's what I was just asking. Okay, WWE continue. doesn't have 30 women. Even if you pull from NXT, do you still have 30 women? At this point, remember they were lead. It's so sad how strong their women's division was. Now it's like, do you exist? But yeah, in regards uh, to, yeah. Oh no, continue. No, just in regards to winning, it just seems like Ronda is such the obvious one. Yeah. She has to be that big surprise element. You have Bailey, which you know will bring a lot of yay and happiness, but in terms of ratings, because if you look overall. WWE came in what almost last and one of their their programs. So that's that's really bad. So mm. you need that Ronda Rousey to to make people turn in and that worked what was it those years ago when she was in there. And I mean it's the only thing that happened. Well, you, who are you going to call from NXT? Really? Well, I I, I do think you'll see hit some round. NXT people You'll see some NXT people in the match. Be fat, um, they're gonna pull her back. Oh no, she's not coming back. She's <laughs> not coming fired. back. Uh, I would love to see Io Shirai in the match because mm. that's someone who I thought was gonna get already moved up to the main roster. So I, I don't know what the delay is. Um, I obviously there's been speculation on this, and obviously no one is saying yes or no. I would love to see Paige make a return. I don't yes. know when it's happening yeah. because her contract is up the middle of this of this year. So I kind of feel like something has to happen with that. She said she does want to she still has a lot more to give. So if she is healthy, that'll be a nice surprise also. Uh, oh, for, for gosh, that, match. that could yeah. be bigger than Rhonda. Yeah, that would be way yeah. bigger than Rhonda. Yeah, I, I, I definitely Definitely agree. That's a that's another big name to 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 consider. Like you said, like with Paige, believing that there's a chance that she can come back. That there's more, still more left for her to do. That would be that's probably the biggest name in terms of like like maybe not outside of wrestling. You know, Ronda's more known outside of wrestling and everything, but in the context of everything. But we've already seen Ronda. We've seen Ronda come in. You know kind of stole Asuka's thunder when Asuka won the Rumble and just came out like, oh, ignore her. I'm the attraction here. I'm going to point at the sign and all that. And, and, and I'll admit, I was excited when Ronda showed up because it, it confirmed the rumors. But It was exciting at that time. It, but I, I felt bad for Asuka because, like, did it have to be at that very moment? No, it no, it like, did not. Nope. You know, and, and, and 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 Oscar has never really gotten her revenge over that, so I, I um yeah. I feel a certain type of way about that. So and and, and I think that, <laughs> I don't know if we all agree. I I felt like Oscar should have been part of that that, yep. that event at, at WrestleMania mm-hmm. because she was carrying that division at at that point. Mm-hmm. For her to just drop the belt to Charlotte all of a sudden and now not even be on the card, I thought that was BS. So. Terrible. What if it's Big Swole? Big Swole comes in. Big Swole. Oh wow. That would, that would <laughs> well, she's she's terrible. a free she, she's a free agent now, right? She's not going back to, to <laughs> AEW. So well she's not going no, back. I mean, especially... I would love to see her in WWE. Absolutely. Yeah, her husband's um, there, so that's why I said uh yeah. we'll see. Appearance, and I would be team her because that whole Tony Khan situation was a mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and she would be the first. AEW alum to go into WWE, I believe. Am well, I yeah. Well, granted, it's only like three years. Well, no, 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 well, Chell, I, no, Chell, no. Been I, I, a little over two years at this point. You know, I, I, I will be very surprised if you see somebody from AEW or in, in or at this event. 
Like, I mean, whether it's a former person or whatever, I'll be highly surprised. Well, remember, they well, were screaming Cody because Cody doesn't have a contract. Yeah, he's a free agent. He has a handshake deal, I guess you could say. Um, well, well, oh, yeah, say, we'll, 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 we'll get to that later. But, yeah, uh, sorry. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves there. But, uh, yeah, Paige, my goodness, I would love to see her enter this. Um, and, um, but you know, I could see, like, yeah, Ronda would be one. And here's the thing with Ronda, okay? If she does appear at any point in the Roman match, she's winning it. Yeah. She's only yeah. appearing in it if she's winning it. Um, so if she – obviously, she's not winning if she's not in there. But if she shows up at any point, any number, she's winning that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I, that's the way I see it. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities here. Um, so I had said – I said Bailey's winning this. Have you two had a? I mean, we've talked about surprises, but have you two predicted who is going to win it? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think Ronda Rousey is is obviously the one who's going to win it. Mm-hmm. I would prefer Oscar still because, but obviously they, yeah, Ronda Rousey. That's the more attractive matchup for Becky Lynch. So I, I think Ronda Rousey is going to be the one who wins it. Okay. What do you think, Dana? Jade Cargill. No, I'm joking. It has to be Ron. <laughs> I mean, what to me, it's either Rhonda or it's Paige. You can't the my heart wants Paige more than it wants Rhonda. It wants both women in the WWE. But mm-hmm. from just remember when CM Punk came back? Yes, yeah. that was a whole worldwide thing because you had like it was it was broadcast on NFL, but that felt like such a personal fan thing. Yeah. You know, as a fan, you watched him seven years. He was gone. He came back, and yes, he made a name for himself other places, but not really because he failed at the UFC and he wrote comics, and that's great. But the wrestlers wanted him back wrestling. In a ring, it feels the same way to Paige. Like, yay, Rhonda, woo, great. But Paige is like, she's a wrestler. And and it felt like someone who just really belonged to wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. And no matter what she does and her success, it wrestling misses her. And she she needs to fill that hole. And and we've seen so many people with neck injuries. I don't, I'm not a doctor. I've never seen her medical records. I don't know anything, but just to see so many other people, Daniel Bryan is running around. Well, sorry, Brian Danielson running around, literally killing people just and he, cause he's bored. You, you have um, edges back. Edge. You have, mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. all these other people who've had neck injuries return. It just feels so sad that you see Paige, and she was so young when it happened. She was yeah. under 30, you know. I She needs to come back. Even if it's for that one run, she needs to come back. I want to see her come back. So I would rather prefer her win and have that literal WrestleMania moment. Because that just, it just meant something so much. I would compare it to when CM Punk came back to Chicago. That I, I I need her to just come back. So I don't know what'll happen, but that's my wish. <laughs> it's a lot of yeah. It's a lot of never say never when it comes to wrestling because you mentioned Brian Danielson. You mentioned um, uh, Edge was another big one. Um, Sting has been wrestling. Sting has been like thought, we thought he was done. Dude's like and, seventy. Yeah, and he's still and he's still going, and so it's like. You, I'm sure Paige takes inspiration from all these people, and in the back of her mind is like, why can't that be me? Mm-hmm. So I hope it is. Assuming that, obviously, assuming that that you know that it's safe enough for her to do it, and that there's not going to be any 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 consequences or whatever. I want her back in there just to have that moment, like you said. You know, it would, it, it, it would be it, amazing. It, it'd be a great thing for everyone, you know. But uh. We'll see. I mean, it, it, it gives me something more to look forward to with that uh, with that Rumble match for sure. I would um, I would cry. I would have those tears. The guy who was crying when CM Punk came out and they had to go and find him, you. that would be me at home. It'd be totally understandable. She's super popular. 
<laughs> she's super popular, and we would all be so thrilled for her. Um, it's just gonna make it more disappointing if she doesn't show up now. But we'll see. We'll see. Watch it be no surprises. <laughs> Yeah. All the people come back. We're like former wrestlers who we have to go like who? Oh no! Oh no! There's gonna they, be a couple where it's like they, they, they can't they can't afford that. They, they, there has to be surprises. There's a lot of bad you know, news with WWE last really year, like and there has to be I something. Like, I feel like WWE doesn't care about. I mean, I know it, it may look bad in the press, but the way have they been conducting themselves? They don't really care. You I might see the gobbledygooker so, make an appearance. The gobbledygooker is coming back. I, I, I think it's the funniest thing. Yeah. Melina will probably come back. Um, 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 Layla, well, Layla Ali, remember her? Yeah, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Maybe she'll come back. The girl who goes, "Excuse me," that's not Vicky, but the one that was Jill, who was the singer. Oh, um, Julian uh, Hall. Her? No, Julian Hall. Was it Julian Hall? It was Julian, Julian Hall. Hall. Yeah, it was Julian Hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So, don't be surprised if um Lillian Garcia like makes an appearance. But Julian Hall made made the Rumble appearance last year. She'll probably come again. I mean, just okay. people really remember she did, anything. She did last year. Yeah. Um, there you go. Let's let's move on to before we get into the men's Rumble match. I do want to talk about the Universal Championship match. Um, is defending champion Roman Reigns going up against his former Shield brother Seth freaking Rollins, and um, the Usos have been barred from ringside. Um, who wants to go first on this one? I guess that'll be I, me. I'll go oh, first. Yeah, there you go. He he volunteers his trip. I will go first. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. You know, I'm a, I'm a mark for the shield, of course. Always have been, always will be. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect from the buildup of this because these are two heels, and it's not something that they always do. Um, and it was weird because I felt like in the lead-up to this, they were kind of making Seth Rollins a pseudo-face where it's like, okay, he's the lesser of two evils and all this. But then if you watch SmackDown tonight and watch that final segment, they kind of went the other way and they made Seth more of a dick in all of this. And you almost you almost start to you almost start to feel bad for Roman because they talk about because that's talking about oh, you remember the time that I cracked that chair on your back? And you can see the disappointment in Roman's face. It's like, oh, I I'll never forgive you for that and everything. So like, <laughs> So it's like, you know, like Roman Reigns is still, you know, like a narcissistic jerk and all that stuff. And he still needs to cheat to win. And he still has his, his, his the bloodline backing him up. And that's how he's been able to win. But we remember him as a baby face. We remember him as, you know, you know, the leader of the shield or whatever towards the end of that. And, you know, he never really gave Seth Rollins the comeuppance for that whole thing. It, it was a very weird thing when they split up that Roman Reigns focused on Randy Orton instead of who they should have been focusing on. Uh, no, they left that to uh, Dean Ambrose. Yes, Dean Ambrose. You know, We know him as John Moxley, but um, they had Ambrose do all of that, and uh, it was almost as if the Roman Reigns character didn't really care. And we're seeing him care now, like years and years later, which is kind of bizarre. But that's how they're doing this, where it's like, this is not just a one-on-one -on -one match. This is a match between two people with history. And it's funny because Roman Reigns just keeps, keeps trying to say, oh, the past is the past. Oh, I'm the tribal chief. I'm on God mode now and everything. But Seth keeps bringing up the past, and you can see it's eating away at Roman. And it's Part of, along with the fact that Roman has not beaten Seth Rollins in a meaningful match. So that's what makes this kind of intriguing because if there's any moment where Roman Reigns may drop the belt, it could be at the Royal Rumble against Seth Rollins because that's the one guy that has his number. But then you think, is the plan for Seth Rollins to go into WrestleMania as a Universal Champion? And I don't think that's what it is. Um so I feel as though 
I don't know who it is that's going to take that belt off of uh, Roman Reigns. I don't know. But I just had this feeling that they want to keep him as champion for at least one more mania. Um, so I think he's going to retain somehow. Because, because, you know, the fact that, yes, yeah, Seth Rollins has beaten him all this time, but this is going to be like, oh, well, now it's my time. Now I'm finally getting over. Like, this is a chance for Roman Reigns to get over that hump. You know what I mean? So I feel like, and don't forget, the whole partnership thing between Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens is something that this, they're, you know, building up or whatever. I don't know if they're going to have a tag run from it or what have you. But I don't think that right now they're going to, put the belt on Seth Rollins. I wouldn't mind being wrong because I feel like Seth, like we've gone, what, two years now without him having a, a, a belt. I think that we've waited long enough, and I'd like to see him have a run as this crazy heel as champion. I would definitely like to see it. I don't think we're going to see it yet. That's just the thing. So I'm going to say Roman Reigns retains. I reserve the right to change my mind. Because I, I, I've been flip-flopping on this, but I just have this feeling like they want Roman Reigns going into Mania as a champion. I just don't know who it's against. So uh, for now, I'm just going to say Roman retains. All right, so now that I've gotten that out of the way, would any of you like to take a shot? I just think it's really interesting that what they broke up in 2019 and we're finally now getting the, the continuance of the story. And they didn't even do that, you know, when Moxley was still there. And he's in a whole different company now. Which started in January. And they broke up in April. Sadness. But, um, yeah, let's let's go the four-year-old route storyline that we randomly dropped. Who's next? Mean Street Posse and Shane is gonna come finish off their storyline too. But yeah, what um with this, uh, I think it would. Ooh, I don't know, but I would say that I do want Roman to retain. But it would be more interesting if Seth was the one who brought him down. Um. And kind of showed that arrogance towards him. They're both pretty arrogant people. But Seth knows how to carry it more. Roman, I still feel, has to to kind of work on his promos a little bit. He's a little too stiff. But um, I do. I just still see that he's going to... I don't want him to win. But I just think that Seth Rollins would be such a better person just to, to win. And to be able to just laugh in his face and be like, see... You can't even beat me from like four years ago when I slapped you in the chair. We slapped you in the chair. I slapped you. You're on your back with the chair. Um, and that would be the one guy who could tear him down. So that would be funny. But just because the Usos are banned doesn't mean that it prevents other people from interrupting the whole match. So I do see that this is going to probably end in a DQ. How? I don't know. But it would be, this is what, and then John Moxley comes. No, but um, I I do feel that the Usos are going to try to maybe find a way to come down in there. Even though they're banned, they would cause that distraction, which will lead to a fruit roll-up and you call it a day. Um, that's just kind of the way how I see it because it is WWE. I would love for someone else to come and distract him and and that would be much better. But that's that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Roman Reigns because of a DQ. Rich, before you go ahead, I, I wanted to follow up on what Dana just said about the Usos because that's something that I thought about as well. That just because they're barred from ringside does not mean that they're not gonna still try. You know, like they've never been one to follow the rules. We've seen this before, where like referees down. And then all of a sudden, here comes the people that weren't supposed to be ringside coming in. And it's not illegal if you don't get caught. You know what I mean? That's that's there's that whole thing. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I don't know whether like the Usos will definitely be involved or not. I I think it depends on like are they are they in the Rumble match? Uh, let me take a quick look. I don't see them in the Rumble match, so they're going to have to be involved in some regard. There's no way they're going to just keep them off the show. So 
I, I like Dana. I like your, your theory that even though they're barred from ringside, doesn't mean they're mm-hmm. not going to have something happen. It's just going to happen when oh. the referee's down. Does anyone also remember the whole Shield final chapter situation that WWE did right oh, before vividly. Ambrose <laughs> right before Ambrose left? <laughs> vividly. I mean, do you want me to go into that or? or, or so it's just like again, it's just so weird. Like you don't remember. It seems like WWE doesn't remember their own storyline. So there's like, hey, forget that whole part. We're gonna just have them fight each other again. Oh, oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like they they've forgotten the whole thing where like, oh, we're we're back together again and and everything is fine. You're forgiven. They've done that twice already. Like they had the shield break up, they got back mm-hmm. together in like what 2017, then they split up and got back together again in 2019. You know, <laughs> so, so it's like we're gonna just forget all that, and we're just gonna pretend like Seth Rollins just betrayed the shield. Like it just happened. Like now, this raw movie coming out after eight years, you know. Um, I mean, I, I think I think we, as well as the fans, can agree that Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns they know and remember exactly what happened. Um, WWE may not want them to get into this thing where you have to constantly mention Dean Ambrose and in, in his involvement, all this other stuff. So uh, this is, I'm pretty sure, though Seth. If he was able to have more input about this, they would do it correctly. But I think they're trying to be careful with uh, Moxley. Um, well, I don't even and- think that it, that Moxley factors into it that much, to be honest. I think, I mean, granted, while 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 Seth and Roman are doing their promos, they have to dance around it to not mention him. Yeah, you know, too much or whatever. No, they mm-hmm. mentioned him because remember he said, "Oh, you even because of you, Mox left." Seth mentioned it once. But Seth he mentioned it. it. So I, I do see yes. them doing oh because of you. And but, it you was, but, but so but what Rich's point is is making is making Mox a big focus of this. And that's not what they're doing. Through all this whole program, Seth mentioned Mox once in passing, and mm-hmm. that was it. Yeah. Um and they're not going to do a thing where they talk about the tree or whatever. It's just the the, the thing that they want to be careful about is not. To, it's, it's and I, I get that the shield is always going to be a part of their history and always a part of their relationship, but they're not going to want to make it that every single time that they have a match, it's something shield related. It could you have to remember that these are two different characters than they were when they were with the shield. You know, like they like Seth Rollins has evolved in many different ways since then, uh-huh. and this is really Roman Reigns' first evolution since the Shield drop because he was still a freaking Shield character for the longest time, wouldn't let it go, and yeah, just finally it, it it took it it took a damn pandemic for him to switch it up, um, and it, where we have where we have now. Um, but, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's good that they bring back kind of those raw emotions a little bit, but it's really the focus is like, okay, the belt's on the line here. Yep. And it's really what it is. What I find fascinating and, and I want to just say this part and then Rich, you can go ahead is that I do like this whole thing of. Seth Rollins being a foil to Roman Reigns because it's almost like in, I compare it to the Green Goblin being a foil to Spider Man, where oh, no. you just can't quite like you always have that one that you just can't quite figure out that one you just can't beat, you know, no matter how many times you, they go down, they go back up, you know, like like with Spider Man, it's always the Green Goblin, it's always that one that's like, why can't I stop him? And so, um. That's you know, and I felt like the way they should have done it with the shield was that like this guy always beats this guy, but this guy always beats this guy, but this guy always beats this guy, and then have it kind of be like that. Um, but uh, so like uh, Mox was always would always beat, um, well, the thing is, Mox didn't always beat Seth Rollins, is the thing originally, Seth Rollins was always beating Mox, but that changed like a few years after. Uh, Seth Rollins' first world title reign. Then Dean Ambrose, Mox, whatever you want to call him, 
got the upper hand against Seth Rollins one on one. Seth was always getting the upper hand on Roman Reigns, but I think Roman Reigns is always getting the hand on Ambrose slash Rollins or whatever. So it'd be that kind of triangle or what have you. Um, it's interesting to have Seth Rollins be the one guy that Roman Reigns can't solve. And so that's why if Seth Rollins were to win, that would make it, that that's another thing. Um, now you have Roman Reigns, like his ego will be shattered because it'd be like you have this 500 plus day reign, and then this freaking mother effer shows up, this mm-hmm. ghost in the past who I still can't beat, and he ends my streak. What the hell is going on here? You know that kind of thing. I just don't think it's. I don't think that's how it's going to play out, but I think that'll be very fascinating. Now, Rich, I am very sorry for delaying you. Oh, no, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? It's, all, you're, it's all good. Well, I thought that there were great thoughts from both you and Dana. Um, you made some valid points. Uh, however, I think Seth Rollins is winning this match. And let me explain why that is. Uh, not once in any of your explanations did I hear anybody mention Brock Lesnar. There is still unfinished business between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar could be the one that takes out the Usos, and therefore they aren't able to do as much as they could to try and interfere with that match. And Brock Lesnar can also make himself available to come out there and distract and make sure that Roman Reigns loses the match. Um, My thought is if Brock Lesnar is uh, going to retain against Bobby Lashley, Chances Uh are that belt is going to SmackDown and the universal title is going back to Raw. And I think I have a good idea of who Seth Rollins is going to face, but we'll get into that later. But but I think it makes sense to address this issue between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns because no one told them to change the plan and have Brock Lesnar win the title all of a sudden at this event and then completely, I mean, I think that really threw things off, but I have an idea as to why they did that. But I I think right now that is obviously going to be a WrestleMania match. The only exception would be if they are planning to unify those titles, then you would have Roman Reigns still have the championship, but you have to have a raw champion also. So I don't think uh, that, that um, that's, that's the initial plan. I definitely Mm -hmm. think you're going to see, Roman Reigns lose this match. And yes, it, it's going to be some, you know, I, I'm curious to see how they do that because you're going to still have to make him look strong in defeat. That's why I think Brock Lesnar is going to get involved in, in, in this distract or whatever to take his focus off. And again, the importance of that, those three have history at WrestleMania because if you recall, Seth Rollins, when he cast in Brock Lesnar, he took advantage of that opportunity. So I, it makes sense. It's from a storyline standpoint, it makes perfect sense. Um, I know people don't want to see Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar again, but uh, I think that's what's going to end up happening, if I had to make a guess. <laughs> that's a very, very uh-huh. good theory. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, we don't uh-huh. really necessarily want to see Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar part three, part four, part five, whatever it is at this point. But these are two different guys than what we saw mm-hmm. when they were force feeding us babyface Roman versus heel Brock Lesnar, this it's a different that the roles have switched, yeah. Um, and so I, I, I'm i intrigued to see that. Um, I really liked your theory. Wow, <laughs> I, I really like it. I do. He's speechless, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so it, I mean, it's so good that it's definitely not happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. That that makes sense. Yeah, that and, makes a lot and, of sense. And, and and they could have something good staring them in the face, and they'll go a different direction, you know. Um, you know. So, but yeah, that, I'll I'll be very interested to see if your your theory plays out there. Um, I feel like like with, with yeah, like it's like if Rollins were to win the belt, it only makes sense that he brings it back to Raw, and therefore because Brock Lesnar is a free agent, he can go whatever show he wants. Mm-hmm. He'll just go back to SmackDown, and he'll take the uh-huh. title with them. And now, and you already have a built-in thing. And then at that point, for the match we're about to address next, you'd f- find out who's going to challenge Seth Rollins at WrestleMania yep. for the Universal Championship. Very, well, very, very interesting stuff. This is this is why we have this show because I like, like these ideas. But let's go into it. 
it's the last uh, last match. Uh, it's the men's um, Royal Mumble Royal, uh, Royal Rumble match. But before we do that, is there one last thing that you wanted to mention, Rich? Oh no, I, I was going to mention that. I, I I would like to say something about that about this match first because it's a continuation of what I was saying. But continue first. Okay. Yes. Yeah, let us have know the Royal Rumble <clears throat> men's Royal Rumble match. Um. This. This is the list of confirmed names. Angel Dawkins, Montez Ford, Ray Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, Austin Theory, Johnny Knoxville, Sheamus, Damian Priest, AJ Styles, Big E, Happy Corbin, Madcap Moss, Sami Zayn, Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens, Omas, Randy Orton, Riddle, Chad Gable, Otis, Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura, Rick Boogs, and Ricochet. So let's see. That is uh, 25 names. So that leaves us room for five more names that we don't know about. Did you say Johnny uh, Knoxville? Yeah, Johnny. I did, I did mention Johnny Knoxville. Okay. And, and, it's sad that they're gonna waste a, a a spot because of some, you know, movie promotion movie. thing, you know. Money, yeah. money talks. That's, you know, Is no one, no one's, gonna, no one's gonna care about that. I mean, I like, I not no disrespect to Johnny Knoxville because I loved no. Jackass when I was younger and you know, a lot of stuff, but I'm not trying to see him in a Royal Rumble match. <laughs> Just not. Um, Rich, please go first because I know that you want to continue. Your thought from how your theory, your your masterful okay. theory of this uh, uh, universal uh, championship. Well, okay, but so before I get to that, let me just make a, a two a quick comment on two things I do expect to happen in this match. Um, I feel like Rey Mysterio and Dominic they are headed on a collision course, and we have been waiting for this whole thing to happen. Some type of feud. It is worth noting. Rey Mysterio is on the cover of the upcoming WWE game that's coming out in March. Mm. And that game, they actually go into a lot of, you get to play a lot of his matches throughout his, his career. And I believe Dominic is in the game as well. I think something happens in this match that starts that whole stuff with the whole issues between father and son. And, and you're going to start to see that unravel over the next couple of weeks so that they actually have a match at WrestleMania. I think that has to happen at some point. It seemed like it'll be perfect timing now because of the promotion of the game and all this other stuff, but we'll see. So that's one point. The other point I was going to make is obviously I haven't been watching raw, but the one thing I do know from watching it the last time, Vince McMahon is very high on Austin theory. So Austin Theory will possibly be in like the final couple of people in this match towards the end of the match. Obviously, he's not going to win, but he's going to be in the match for a long time because I guess this is the next person that Vince wants to build up as his uh, his his pet project, I guess you can say. So I expect, expect, I expect that to happen. Now, to answer the question of who I think is going to win the match, well, I think it's very simple, actually. If Seth Rollins is wins against Roman Reigns and he brings that belt back to Raw, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people on that roster. Some people on that roster that I think are going to get the opportunity or deserve the opportunity. Hands down, my personal opinion, I think it's Big E. And why I say that? I think about the amount of outrage that it was when Big E lost that title. And I, and I recall prior to all of this happening, WWE says, oh, yeah, we got big plans for Big E when he does win the title. Okay. If Big E, from what I understand, initially, as it was <laughs> planned, Big E was supposed to lose that title at this pay-per-view back in January, this month, the day one event. He was supposed to lose it to Seth Rollins at that point. That was the original plan prior to the Brock Lesnar being added to the match. So... I think it only makes sense. Seth Rollins gets the belt back, and this is who he ends up having to face after Big E wins the Rumble. Now, I could be wrong because Drew McIntyre was injured. I don't know if he – I think he's still injured and out. Obviously, Drew, Drew McIntyre would have been the one to get a, get some type of title match at WrestleMania, 
but I don't think he's healthy enough to get that match now. So I think the next best option is Big E because they didn't really do much with him when he was the, the champion, the WWE champion. I feel like a lot of people would be happy to see that. And it's going to feel a little bit more uh, legitimate now because it's the universal title as opposed to the other one, even though the other one is the real WWE belt. Um, but yeah, I, I, my guess is that's 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 the that's the person that's probably going to going to win the match or have the best chance of winning. Um, I could be wrong. That's why I say the prediction is not masterful, as Ricky said. It, it, this is a guess, so I just want to make that clear. <laughs> Uh oh. So who's next? Dana. Oh, okay then. Um, let's see. Who could possibly win this? Uh, Mustafa Ali. Hmm. Yay! He does not. You know, he wants to leave the company. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. But he's gonna be in the Royal Rumble. They'll use him because remember he made the big stink over Twitter about wanting to leave to be happy and to pursue his other dreams, and he's not able to do that because it's WWE and WWE is not allowing him to leave, which is weird because I'm like, you just let go of everyone, and then you granted releases to people who wanted to leave, and you couldn't use the whole, oh, well, we need you, because you just said, oh, budget cut, so we have to get rid of everyone. But of all people, you're keeping Mustafa, whatever his name is, Ali. So um, maybe I do see him come maybe in this Rumble, in the Royal Rumble, which I hope he sabotages so that he can get out of his contract. But um, I was wondering when it came to surprise entrance, who's going to come in there? And I think we have that whole forbidden door. And we do know that there are some contracts that are up. So who will seem like the perfect fit into a WWE? Obviously, it's not a Marco stunt, but it would be a Brian Cage. And even though Brian Cage is uh, still under contract with AEW, the forbidden door. Please come and take him because AEW is definitely not utilizing him under any capacity and just wasting him away. Which, you know, you can... Comp it's true! They're not using him. Let him do something. It's frustrating. They're treating him like, you know, Vince treats the other wrestlers who wanted to wrestle Karrion yep. Cross. So, um... And speaking of Karrion Cross, well, wouldn't it be something if he comes back and and they allow him to be the old Karrion Cross that we knew and love from NXT and then he's gone the next day? But, um... I I still want to know what's going to happen with that forbidden door. Obviously, Cody is not coming in there. John Moxley is not coming in there. Um, for me, it would be hilarious if it's Matt Cardona, but Matt Cardona just keeps calling WWE his indies. So I don't I don't think that's going to happen. But um, in terms of who's winning this, it would obviously be Brock Lesnar. Um, is he in this? He's in this, right? No. No. Mm -mm. no. He's, he's not been announced in it, but he's definitely a possibility. He's a possibility. So there you go. Brock Lesnar is definitely, you know, somehow going to make his way back into this again. Um, <laughs> Roman is in this, which is really interesting because the Usos are the Usos in this? No, the well, Usos are not in Roman's not no, in this. Neither match. Roman or the Usos are in it, as far as we know. They're not. They have as not. As far as we it. know. The so thing we have is, surprise in, yeah. The thing is that if either of those two guys lose their belt, I fully expect them to enter and win the Rumble, whether it's Brock or Roman. If either of them wow. lose, I, I expect them to enter and win it. Um, but go ahead and continue, Dana. Please. Nah, I know. So that did that to me. You know, it's I, Brock Lesnar would just be the main because WWE likes to be repetitive. Mustafa, mm -hmm. if he comes in here, would just be hilarious. But um, my whole thing is, who is who are the other people? I, dude, no one gives a flying yep. fart about Johnny Knoxville. Um, <laughs> it's just true. So we have that whole forbidden door. And if that forbidden door actually does apply to TNA uh, Impact, sorry, I keep calling it TNA because that's what it is to me. But if it's re in, in regards... If, uh, if it does go to impact, then it's like, who do we bring back? Is it Rhino? Does he make an appearance? 
is he in TNA Impact? He's an Impact. Probably stop. He's an Impact. So does he run up in there as well? And does he make some kind of appearance? Um, also, what's going on with the whole? Uh, 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 you had Jake at is Jake Atlas in there? Jake Atlas, maybe? No, they they released him. No, oh, you, no, you, you, you mean they you released mean him? Logan? Sorry, you mean Paul Logan or, or the one of the brothers? No, oh God, could you imagine Logan Paul? <laughs> Logan Paul, yeah, Logan there you Paul. Go. No, Jake Paul, you have. Oh, God. I'm confusing him with Jay White. Jay White, what happens if Jay White is there? Oh no, they're not. I mean, that, that you don't think they're going to use any? I mean, at this point, WWE needs something. Uh, well, Impact, uh, you know, if, if somebody from Impact could show up. Uh, I, I, I mean, mean, you have a women's champ. Is 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 it worth? Is it official that Braun Strowman has joined Impact already? And and is and if so, is it possible that he could be one of the people that shows up in this match? I have no idea. I don't know oh, what his status is. I'm not, I don't know. You could have Braun. No one. Yeah, he's I, not doing anything really huge. Man. So, well, well, well. As you go, you still think of a few things. I, I just want to make a comment and just say. Okay. Th th this this is the frustration of it, it's what it's why I'm not really a, I'm I'm a little sour on WWE now because there's so many talented people that they just got rid of that could have mm -hmm. made an impact in this the matches like this mm -hmm. Carry Cross who you mentioned Dana perfect example mm -hmm. Keith Lee I don't know this could have been his opportunity right here yeah. Bray Wyatt he could come back. Guy. You see, that's why I say, but again, they got rid of all these people. So it, it now it's it, it kind of like I really don't want it to be Brock Lesnar shows up in this match again. And I, I, I don't want that to happen. But uh, it makes me a little nervous to see who actually is going to win it because they got rid of so many good people. And uh, we'll see. I don't know. I want to know how outraged or how happy people would be if it was if it was Bray. Well, that yeah. would be really interesting if it yeah. was Bray. I think people like, would be happy for him. Uh, yeah, but are you going to keep him because this is a one night only show? No, if he if he appears, it's because he's back with WWE, maybe mm -hmm. under a, a lower salary. Um, I, I mean, they brought back Zelina about... Vega. Yeah, but you know? Zelina, no disrespect. It was not at a Bray Wyatt level of popularity, nor creativity, nor genius. Right, which makes it even more sense to bring someone like Bray Wyatt back. Because if Zelina wasn't that popular and they brought her back, wouldn't it make sense to bring someone back who actually sold merchandise? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and that's true. It's just, so, I mean... There's a lot of ways they can go with that, but uh, no, please continue. No, no, it makes perfect sense. It's just, I just don't, I'm really stumped when it comes to who's going to be with the men. And I hope it's yeah. not like, you know, Terry Funk. Rest in peace. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> no, so, um, uh, Kane, Kane, since Undertaker's going to be here watching his wife. And remember, yeah. Kane is supposed to be on Talking Smack. Okay, there you go. So Kane will be there because Undertaker's going to be in, in there watching his wife in the women's match. So, yeah, that makes sense. See, you guys you guys want Kane, but I want Glenn Jacobs. Give me a marriage of Glenn Jacobs. What's that mm -hmm. going to do? That's weird. But, yeah, um, in regards of just winning, I do – if Brock Lesnar does not make an appearance, which would just be weird because he has to win everything um, – I would really love for Big E. Big E is back on SmackDown. And as you said before, you know, he really deserves this. And Black History Month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think when he won the title, it was a good moment, but it's it it's it's different when it's a WrestleMania match. You saw with Kofi when he won that title how much of a big deal that, that was. So uh -huh. it kind of feels like that they gave him that belt initially as a test to see how the reaction would be. And then you, because they literally have no one else they can give. I mean, they can give it to someone else, but I kind of feel like, you know, I think it would, would have, it have to be Big E. But I'm curious to know what, what Ricky is going to say. But one uh -huh. quick thing I want to mention 
I don't want to backtrack, but uh, I thought of one other name that should that's probably going to be in that women's match because we haven't seen this person in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Lacey Evans, because Ooh. she actually took a picture mm. recently of her after getting a, a um, you know, because she had it, she had another baby. She's back in shape now. That was about six weeks ago. So I would not rule her out as being in this match as well. But continue. I completely forgot something. That's like I should have thought of it before because why controversy creates cash, right? Mm -hmm. Gunther. And they introduce him as oh, oh, Gunther. Oh, Walter. Well, I thought Walter. I thought they I thought I thought, I thought they, they uh, dropped that uh they dropped that, that, the last gimmick. name, not the, oh, the first last name. name. You know, because that somehow is going to distract people. And no, he can't be named after the Nazi because well, well, actually, he's just Gunther. Well, actually, that that needs to happen. He needs to get moved to. Um, I would. I think he should be on the main roster at this point. But and then well, at the same time, yeah. He, well, go ahead. No, go ahead. At the same time. At the same time, you have a whole bunch of people who they want to push out of NXT because they're old. So Tomasa could make a ball on there. Kyle O'Reilly could come in there. No, Kyle Riley's an AEW. Kyle Riley's an AEW. Jesus yep. Christ. I'm mixing <laughs> up names. I have uh, not Roderick said Strong. since December. Are you Roderick, thinking of Roderick Strong, who was on his way out. I'm assuming he'll probably be there. Um, I'm terrible. Yeah, we'll see. It's it's fine. Like I haven't been following NXT really that much. No, I have. Too. You have? I have. I just... It's just well, I haven't slept since December. If in, in fairness to you, like you're doing a million interviews, you're watching a million shows, you watch every wrestling show there is. Yep. So you're gonna get Harry, these things mixed up. It, it, Harry it. Potter's coming. <laughs> Voldemort. Yeah. Voldemort gonna win the rumble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um Gunther. So with Gunther. Um, would be an interesting, interesting way of like introducing the world to him in the Rumble match. I don't remember if he was was he has he been in any of the Rumbles before as Walter. I feel like uh, he has. I don't remember if he has. I don't. I, I don't. I don't remember either. I felt like it would have made a big impact if he did. So it does make sense. But if he does appear in the Rumble, it's not going to be a promotion. Because it seems like they're building him up in NXT now. Mm -hmm. like he just, he just, you know, moved into America. He's gonna have a run in NXT uh, on NXT TV until they eventually decide to call him up. But uh, they could do that to have like you know an NXT presence on the uh, in the Rumble. But this is gonna be interesting because I listed twenty five names. That leaves only five surprises. And usually they're pretty conservative when it comes to what those remaining five names are. I, I'm not, I think that a lot of times we hype ourselves up to this big, you know, this big name to appear, people talking about Okada and everything. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. <laughs> like when Kenny, when AEW was starting up, like, oh, Kenny Omega will appear in, in the Rumble. Like, no, he won't. <laughs> like, this is like when his, this is like when his contract. Was expiring with New Japan. His contract was expiring at the end of January, and so he wouldn't have been eligible to go to that Rumble. But people still speculated. Yeah. Oh, they'll make an exception for him. Yeah, I'm sure New Japan would make uh, do WWE a big favor like that. Um, so I'm not expecting a whole lot as far as surprises go. If Cody shows up, I would consider it a big surprise, even though people have speculated. Because the fact that he's now synonymous with AEW, that would be a bold move on their part. He's I'm like working. not even just synonymous. He's there. He's on their board. Yep. Right. That's um, going to happen. That might happen. The, and, but <sighs> if they, if they want to go really conservative and still have an AEW guy on there, Chris Jericho. Yeah. And I and I thought about that as well, Chris Jericho, for sure. Because um, he's still like – you know, he's made his name in in WWE long before AEW, and people will still remember him as a legend. You know, WCW, WWE. No. no. You don't think it's even possible? 
it's not even possible because even he said it. He said, I would like to retire in AEW. And even for the whole surprise appearance thing, what does it give him? Well, uh, what did it give him? What, does it give him? what did it give him when he appeared at the greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia when he was under contract with New Japan? He did it as a favorite to Vince because he and Vince are still buddies. He yeah, did it as a world. favorite to, to Vince, but what does he need Vince now? Well, in my in my opinion, uh, <laughs> and the way yeah. that people have been clowning him lately. Let, 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 let's also remember that Chris Jericho did that podcast with Steve Austin. So yeah. I kind of feel like it, it it is possible that he could show up. In, a very uh, very good point, also because yeah, he was you know he, he was you know the pain maker. You know he was he was mm -hmm. in AEW. He they name dropped AEW on the WWE Network through mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. So it's like with Jericho, they want to push the envelope a little bit. They want to leave that door, that forbidden door, slightly open if it's Jericho. So um, because it's not introducing a new star. It's introducing a star that's always been around. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different. You know what I mean? Um, so it's possible that we could see Cody or Jericho in it. I don't think we're going to see like Wardlow or you know MJF or or Darby <laughs> Allen, and it's all like we're not gonna go all crazy. Here. <laughs> it's gonna be known WWE guy, you know, if if anyone from AEW shows up. But um, although I, although I, I will I will say this, uh, I'm sure that Ricky will mark out if listening to Moxley's promo. Now I want to take over the world. I'm sure Ricky will mark out if if Moxley walked out there. Oh, this is what I meant when I said I want to take over the world. I also am going to appear in this match. But there's no way in hell that's world happening. World wrestling entertainment. So I yeah, would lose my shit if John Moxley <laughs> appeared in the Rumble. But it, it's not. Happening. I think they're yeah, going to be happening. really conservative, and we might just get like Braun Breaker. Yes, yes, it's going to be people could because the, the, we what we do know is that, like I said, I don't watch NXT, but I have heard that they are not happy with NXT 2.0. So I kind of feel like that's why you're going to see some of those people definitely get in this match so that they can get a little bit more mainstream appeal. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, we're going to definitely see some of those NXT people in, in the match. It's just a matter of who they're going to decide. And Braun, Braun, Braun Breaker makes sense for sure. Um, yeah. LA, LA Knight, maybe, because I think that's someone who they was going to move up. So we'll see. I don't want him to be so great. One. He would be. I would love his to see him against the Miz. That would be mm -hmm. interesting. They're both arrogant and good talkers, and I I really like LA Knight. Yeah, I'm a big fan of LA Knight as well. Um, you know, like I, I like I feel like he's like from like the moment he showed up in NXT, he's right away like one of the leaders of that of that locker room. Like he's definitely been a a, a, a great example there. You know, had had that great program with uh, Cameron Grimes. You know, mm -hmm. um, and even like was it the uh, the War Games? You know, that whole pep talk of the old guard of NXT. He was hyping them up, and like this is the guy that had just shown up in the past year, but he he's talking like he'd been there all this time. I'm like, all right, I was ready to run run through a brick wall for brick wall for LA Knight. He's the man. Um, so I would love to see him appear, but, uh, who knows? I, I, I'm just, I'm, um, I will keep my expectations tempered as far as these surprises go. Um, and, uh, as far as who's going to win it, you know, I've thought of a lot about what you guys were saying and I'll go with Big E. you know, like he, he's, he's, he's deserving and, and, and and I felt like they thought that maybe it's better for him to chase and get the payoff at Mania than to go into Mania as the champion, because you know, like the the the, the story is more compelling when the Bayface is chasing um, for the belt. And I was thinking about how um, what was it like? We remember when Drew McIntyre won the belt two years ago. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, he had to win it in an empty, you know, empty room or whatever. And mm -hmm. it was, that was awful. it was really it was really unfortunate that he didn't get to have 
like like I was I was so glad for him when he won the rumble because he got that big pop from everyone and all that. But he deserved that for Mania. He didn't get to have it. Unfortunately, you know, he lost last year when they had it outside in Tampa. So he didn't get to have that moment there. Um and that makes Drew also a compelling possibility for winning this rumble. Um but I think that it's Big East time to have that moment because he won the bell cashing in on a Raw in Boston that I could have attended, but I opted not to. Mm. And of course, I miss out on the big moment there. <laughs> I remember Big E texting, not texting, tw- tweeting that he was going to cash in later that night. And we all thought, okay, he's just putting on, uh, he's just saying that to make you watch. And then he actually did it. He actually Mm -hmm. cashed in and won it. And everyone was thrilled. But it's like, what better place than WrestleMania to get that? And and the thing is that if they were going to do this whole switcheroo of, oh, let's take the WWE title off your hands for a second. We can give it to Brock. You can go after the Universal Championship. You know? And so that's where I kind of like your theory, Rich, about um, Seth Rollins winning the belt because then that allows Roman to focus on Brock. Mm-hmm. Seth goes in as a heel champion defending, and it would be against the winner of the Royal Rumble, in this case, Big E. Um, man, so now I'm, I'm changing my prediction to Seth Rollins. No, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Against, uh, against Roman to help facilitate this because it just makes the most sense um and you, and you have big e when i mean originally i was thinking you have roman lose the belt and then have him enter the rumble and win but that's that's cheap he already has he already has a ready-made program with brock lesnar he doesn't need to win the rumble they don't need to throw that away but they need to give big e the key to a, a mania main event and the way to do that is to win the rumble so I'm gonna go. I, I know that like everyone's sentimental favorite is Big E, um, and I'm just gonna go with Big E because I feel like it just makes the most sense. But it's not always how it plays out. There's, um, so I'll say Big E. Okay. And if it's anyone else, it would be Roman Reigns. But what were you gonna say? I was gonna ask prior to hearing us. What we had to say, who who was you going to pick for the winner? I was I honestly thought about Big E because I, I was like I can't I I didn't feel strongly about it. It was like oh that's who I would want to win, but they don't always give me who I want to win, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I thought like Drew Drew McIntyre would be good if it weren't for the fact that he just won it two years ago. Mm-hmm. I might not want to have him win it again. And have people start to get sick of him. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. So uh, I think, so yeah, Big E was what I was thinking about, but I was struggling to come up with an alternative. And, mm-hmm. and then thinking about like, oh, it's a possibility that Roman or Brock en- enters this thing and, and wins it. Other other people online are making predictions similar to that, that one of those two will enter and win it. And it got me thinking like that would require, you know, one of them to drop their belt at the rumble and then be like, okay, well screw that. I'm going to earn my, I'm going to earn my, my title shot go and win the rumble. But those are two guys that have already won the rumble. We don't need to see them win it again. No, no, no. They're the two biggest stars on the roster. You don't need to go through the rumble. You could just say, I want a title match, and you've got a title match. Big E hasn't gotten to that point. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll see. I do want to chime on chime in on something that Rich mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's time. It's time. It's time for Dominic to turn heel. Yes. Turn yep. him heel. And yeah. I don't know if they're gonna necessarily pull the trigger. At the Rumble, but he's going to eliminate his father. <laughs> and I happen. want him to do it with the cover of WWE. Um. <laughs> Just bop him in the head with his game. 
<laughs> Smash Lisa. them out of the game. Like, mm-hmm. This is crap. This is crap. I play Fire Pro Wrestling. I don't play this crap. Yeah, no. <laughs> that, 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 that really is, is the perfect scenario because the game comes out before WrestleMania. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a good marketing for Rey Mysterio. Um, mm-hmm. So I hope it happens, but we'll, we'll see. And, you know, it's going to be a thing that Dominic wants to start winning. And usually when people get frustrated and want to start winning, they turn to the dark side. Yep. You know, they, they, they become, you know, full Anakin Skywalker and, and turn turn to the dark, dark side. You know what I mean? So um, I feel like that's Dominic's uh, destiny. You know, it, it they, they've been teasing this tension between them and it only makes sense that like okay Dominic's gonna use this opportunity to screw over his father and be like no I'm I'm calling the shots now <laughs> it's my time now you know and so you have the match at WrestleMania where then uh Ray will do the job and 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 Dominic would go over and that propels his son you know beating a legend and all that other stuff I think that would be a great story Mm-hmm. Um, and for that reason, it's why it won't happen. But if we mm-hmm. <laughs> man, that'd be cool. I really like, I, I really like all these ideas. Um, I don't want to end this just yet because I know that there's still more that we could really talk about. I mean, um, yeah, like, like even with, um, and I think part of also watching SmackDown tonight and seeing Big E team up with uh, Kofi. Apparently, Big E is officially back on SmackDown now. Oh, he is. That is that's what they I announced. Said that. Oh, whoa. Yeah. whoa. So, uh oh, um, wow. that that might change the. Uh, I, I didn't know that information. It might change the uh, outcome now of some of those matches. Um, so, so, I mean, again, that makes that makes things kind of interesting. Even even the whole theory of having him face Seth Rollins because Seth Rollins is Raw. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And but I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that you have a Raw versus a SmackDown person. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They could always just switch it right back. They can do it whatever they want, depending on who's got what belt. Um, you know, uh, so. Um, oh, but if, I was worried that they were putting that they were going to put Biggie back in the mid card, you know. So this is going to be a very important few months. Yeah. Um, that well, you know. But go ahead. Well, now that you mentioned the Biggie stuff, that makes me wonder if is is, is so is 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 the tribal chief moving to Raw? Could he be the one moving to Raw to face Brock Lesnar or? Uh... Cause that's I, I had no well, idea Big E is on SmackDown now. Cause well, Steph, so, Seth Rollins is on SmackDown as well. Yeah, well, Seth Rollins, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins is on Raw, but okay. he's been appearing on SmackDown uh, because he just decided one day I want to go for that belt that Roman has. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's possible that yeah, maybe that Seth Rollins is the one that is the makes the move, and they just they just decide to retcon this whole. Idea of Big E going to SmackDown, they're like, no, we're just kidding. It's still on Raw. <laughs> it's, it's, it, they can do whatever they want, um, depending on how the story goes and everything. But uh, it, it, it adds some intrigue because we don't quite know where the pieces fit in this puzzle. Yeah, um, uh-huh. going a lot of different ways. There's only a few pieces, but there's a lot of different ways that they can go. And that's it, it makes it a little a little fascinating. Um, but uh yeah um so yeah that's that's the that's the pay-per-view and i'm sure there'll be one or two matches added to the card that we don't know about and that they probably don't know about and won't know about until the day of um but um yeah that's the show um are there anything is there anything that we want to touch upon before we sign off for the night you know, no, no, uh, nothing that has to do with your I, name. There was my name. Uh oh, 
the name that you have on on the. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Okay, let's 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 talk about the Disney then, because I, I I didn't know what was popping off. Okay, so basically WWE, if you don't know, um, WWE is now owned by Disney, but in Indonesia. Which means that it <laughs> is a lot of more of the things that be happening, okay? So it was really weird. I know it was like the house of mouse is gonna start throwing down. Maybe that's now the Mickey is gonna be in the men's Royal Rumble while Minnie is gonna be in the women's Royal Rumble. It's perfect <laughs> sense now. Um basically what had happened was that they announced this deal, I think around on Tuesday. So what they said was that they're going to bring the whole WWE network to Hotstar. Hotstar is one of the hubs in Disney. Um, I believe I have it. Maybe uh, the thing. No, Hotstar. Okay, sorry, getting off track. Point is, Hotstar is available over in Indonesia, right? And so on the Hotstar channel of Disney, you're going to now be able to get the WWE network. So it's going to be start, it's going to be part of a multi year deal and it's going to be included in their standard service. It's not even like the high up, whatever. So it's the standard service and it basically be all of the pay-per-views that we get, such as WrestleMania, as well as all of the library content, right? So mm -hmm. the deal also sheds light, which is why I said it's slightly important, not just on, on how, the streaming wars is and what how they're trying to grapple with over stuff over there. But the fact that when Nick Khan gave that interview and was like, we're open for business and people were like, Oh, NBC is going to buy you now. Yes. And no, it means that they're not going to say no to anyone who's knocking at the door for a deal. They, again, this is a company that's about entertainment. This is not a wrestling company. This is a company that's meant to solely make money off of the products that it already has, the history and the legacy, you know, the Hulk Hogan's of the past. Now you can go and watch on the WWE Network and in, over in Indonesia on Hotstar. Point is that I'm simply saying is that um, what they're trying to do is that they're going to just accumulate as much money as, as they can. And the whole purpose of that is that, you know, to open doors and availability to other countries and to make even more deals that they can. So here in the USA, the WWE network we know is available through Peacock, which is owned by NBC Universal. And the Disney deal does not mean like, oh, all of a sudden Disney's going to buy all of WWE. No, it just means that they're, they're, the other markets can now join in and decide if they want to you know, spend the money. They too can own a piece of WWE, but the WWE, as we know, the actual company is not for sale yet. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so as of now, they have deals with NBC Universal for their network. We do know that they have USA Network, which is, you know, we have Fox. And we also have Netflix. People keep forgetting we're getting the Vince McMahon docuseries which will be by Vince McMahon, so it's not going to be the real docu-series of Vince McMahon. It's a nice sugar-coated one where we, we struggled, but we made it through. Forget about all those allegations and the people that I screwed in my past. So it's going to be about that. Um, it also shows that they're make, willing to make unusual deals as long as you're willing to pay. They don't really care. Just give us the money. And, and Outside, it's going to look really weird to people who are not familiar with what's going on because it's like, oh, I have WWE, but so does NBC and USA and everyone else. But the simple point that I'm making is that, you know, WWE is open for business. They are obviously taking money from whomever wants to come and knock on their door. Whether or not this means eventually in the future they will be sold, we don't know. But we do know that Disney has enough money to, I don't know what's going on with this goddamn light, has enough money to basically buy them if they want to. So you can consider this to be a trial run. Maybe they'll get more interested and they'll start, you know, accumulating more of what WWE has to offer. Maybe they could make a, a kid's show docu-series or something and we'll see what'll happen there. 
So that'll be very interesting in general. But that is what kind of happened. Yay. Well, Vince, was it uh, Triple H said last year that Vince McMahon said that WWE is open for business. So it looks like this is exactly what they're referring to, that it, it may not be a thing where the company is entirely bought by one entity. It's that they're licensing their entity all over the place and maximizing their profits that way. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, it could be like, like you said, that, that Indonesia has over there, like they're going to have their version of Peacock, uh, which is what Hotstar you said, um, and um, for, for Disney. And so you could have something like that. And then maybe in another country, it's something that Fox has, or maybe something that NBC has, you know, um, that might be the way they decide to go about this to, 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 to maximize their earnings. I mean, I don't know, Rich, do you have anything that you wanted to uh, add on that? Um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily think uh, that uh, this was a wise deal for uh, Disney, but uh, hey, if they got money to spend, by all means, but if they're not looking at uh, what happened with the Fox deal, what happened with all these deals WWE does and I don't think the people who are doing these deals are necessarily happy if the return on investment is not a good one. So, listen, it 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 it, it, it could still work out for them um, in the long run. I just think uh, I'm not a fan of WWE right now. I'm not a fan of them getting rid of all these people who had so much potential to do great things in the company. And it just feels like right now this is a company focused on making money, and that's about it. They don't really care creatively. The ideas are not really great. Um, and that's like I said, it, it's, it's a grim way to look at the product now, but it's a realistic product because, again, I have memories of when we've gone to live shows, NXT, uh, WrestleMania, and at that time – it was felt like it was it just felt like it was it was a better experience not just because everybody was there collectively at, at, within our group but because they actually had some intriguing matchups it feels as though now they've lost a lot of that so i think you're going to have to see some kind of surprises tomorrow night or tonight rather because it is saturday yeah. um but we'll see I mean, keep in mind that we're 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 seeing and and talking about things from a fan's perspective but mm -hmm. these companies are looking at things from a business perspective. And it's why even though the product has been questionable for the longest time, companies are still falling over themselves to give Vince McMahon their money because there's money to be made from it for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. I don't know how they do it. I think it, it there's some kind of voodoo involved here. Um, but the Vince McMahon, the WWE, they keep getting bailed out of their own mistakes. They keep getting these big deals, and they're never going. They're never going to like. They're never going to see any real suffering for the lack of quality in mm -hmm. their writing and all that stuff. I agree, and and I just would like to make a quick correction. Um, I will invest in WWE. Invest in WWE 2K22 because. That at least looks de decent, and 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 I would much rather play that than watch the actual product. So, they 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 got at least one thing that they're doing right, I think, so far. But we'll see when the actual game comes out. That's a topic that's for another day. But you know, yeah. we are we are a video game site first and foremost. But uh, yeah, um, it should be interesting what they do with two K twenty two. I'm going to refrain from commenting on that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in the future. We'll definitely uh, bring that up in the future. Um, I want to wrap things up because we're we're reaching pay per view time. Yep, yep. As far as yep. length of this goes, so uh, I do want to thank everyone for for uh, for attending, um, and thanks for everyone for watching and listening. Um, are there any final thoughts or shout outs that you guys want to make? Uh, I'll just give a shout out to everybody that continues to support the channel. Uh, like I said, we do various types of content. So uh, if you are enjoying the content, 
feel free to like, consider subscribing, and uh, leaving comments. And let us know what you like to see more of on the channel. That's it. Dana? Yeah, no, just thank you for listening to us. Um, like, subscribe if you want. We have a whole bunch of other content. We break down TV shows and movies and a whole bunch of interviews that will be coming up that I can't talk about, but we will have a lot of stuff. I'm under embargo. I've seen stuff that doesn't come out into summer. So it'll be really, really fun. Yeah, I want to echo what you all said that, you know, uh, coalition, definitely where you want to be. Uh, get all the latest news on entertainment, on video games, um, movies, TV shows, all that stuff. Uh, the scrolling marquee on the bottom, if you're watching this on video, those are our Twitter handles right there. Be sure to follow us. Also, follow the coalition. Um, you know, if you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one, but we're on uh, Facebook. Yes, we have a Facebook page. Feel free to like that as well. Uh, we are on social media and, uh, you know, we're independent uh website um but we appreciate all the support that you can give us um and we'll do our best to continue bringing you the content that you want uh but yeah uh until next time uh thank you all very much for watching and listening uh enjoy the royal rumble uh be safe everyone and take care all right, bye -bye.